Hey there, it's Curtis Trades here, and this is going to be the first video in the series for the XXX19 project. The project is going to be a um, Ecotech swap from a Chevy Cobalt, um, which is the LSJ engine and the LNF engine in the later models with the turbo. And it's going to be going into a Fiat X19. And most importantly, it will be street legal. And I am simply documenting this project as it is um, completely done by my father. And um, I, I just want to say that up front so you don't think that this is something that I'm doing. Um, I do not have the technical or mechanical expertise to do any of this. Um, and I'm going to kind of go into an overview of the project, what the end goals are for it. And um, this first episode will basically be focusing on um, my father and his background and why he makes uh, kind of the perfect person for this build and so I'm going to go in the background and this will be the first episode obviously so I'm going to have actually quite a few pictures um, and not as much video in this one but future episodes will have a lot more video um, I just don't have a lot of the um, initial stages videoed um, because he started this project about 10 years ago so um, I, I just got into making videos relatively recently so there's gonna be quite a few pictures and I'll be narrating most of the first part and then I'll show some videos and he'll um, kind of explain different parts of the car and I just kind of ask him about different parts and he'll just kind of explain why he chose to make them that way or what the best way to build them is. So first I'm going to kind of give an overview of what the project is and basically it's going to be a Ecotech swap of a LSJ and, and later an LNF engine into a Fiat X19 and for those of you who aren't very familiar with the Fiat X19 platform it's a um, it's a small Italian sports car from the 70s and 80s and I would it would be easiest to compare it to a Mazda Miata but um, the main difference being that it's mid-engine instead of front engine and um, it's a super light car it's very low power and the original cars came out with it came out with about 75 or 85 horsepower and they weighed about 2,000 pounds. They're not very fast cars, um, extremely nimble. And I'm gonna kind of talk about my father's background now and why he makes a, such a good candidate for this car. Um, he, he raced Fiat's back um, in the 80s and 90s with his brother. They actually won the um, sports car runoff one year with the Fiat X19. So he's got a lot of experience racing and working on these cars. So my father's done a lot of different types of racing throughout his career there at Roush Racing. He did the um, Trans Am series for Tommy Kendall, who was one of the most winningest drivers there in that series. He did NASCAR for many years with uh, Kurt Busch in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And Greg Biffel, he was a spotter and um, he poured gas in the pits for many years. Um, and so he, he worked back in the fabrication shop there at Roush as well. Um, and then later when most of the racing programs moved down to North Carolina, he chose to stay in Michigan and when he was doing that, they um, took up the um, drag racing program for General Motors with the Chevy Cobalts and that's where he got introduced to the LNF and the LSJ um, engines. And when they were doing the drag racing, they actually built the first front wheel drive car to go 200 miles an hour. And they used a heavily modified, obviously, um, LNF motor out of the Chevy Cobalt. Um, obviously, they had bigger turbos and different internals, and I, I believe they used like methanol as fuel. But um, he's had uh, extensive um, work on these engines, to say the least. Um, and they they were topping out around like 1,300 horsepower, um, which is just kind of crazy to think about for a four-cylinder car. That's that's. Uh, or a four-cylinder motor that's not very large. So um, it's pretty impressive what they've done with these engines. The first engine that he's gonna use for this car is kind of called a street engine, I guess you could say, because it's a, a, a modified uh, LSJ motor. And it's right now it's just got a little bit of a tune on it. And it's right around 300 horsepower as is. And um, that's gonna be the first motor that goes in the car. And then he has an LNF motor with the uh, turbocharger on it. 
that um, after he kind of gets the the main build done and the first motor put in, then he's going to build up the LNF motor to be kind of the more uh, heavy duty racing motor or drag motor. Um, so that's kind of the background that he has and uh, I'm going to go into now some of the modifications that have been done already and I got a lot of pictures of these. Um, not super, not, not a lot of video because these were done again a long time ago and um, I'm going to go into kind of what has been done to the car so far. So when I was about 16 or 17 years old, my dad had a bunch of junk Fiats in the back. It was kind of almost like a junkyard in our backyard with how many Fiats he had back there. They were pretty much just parts cars and they were rotting away, kind of sinking into the ground. The grass was growing up over the top of them. And we picked this um, one that had a relatively solid body um, because Fiats are obviously known to rust out. Um, they didn't use very good rust prevention back in the 70s and 80s on these cars. So he picked the one with the best body. I believe it was a, an early one with the diving board bumpers. And we, I went out there with him and he basically took a sawzall and chopped off the entire front clip of the car and the entire rear clip of the car, um, pretty much where the right above where the wheels are. And so this is basically completely gutted. Uh, he took the entire interior out. He chopped the floor off of it. Um, there's not much other than the main cabin section that is stock Fiat. Um, the rest is completely custom. He's used, using uh, chrome molly tubular steel to make a frame that all the other um, parts of the car are mounted off of. And uh, some of the, the more notable things are it's, it uses the Chevy Cobalt front steering rack which is relatively light and small and fits really well. Um, he took about four inches off the total height of the car, mainly from the bottom. There is a roll cage um, inside of the uh, B-pillar up above your head. It's kind of hidden there, which is kind of nice. It goes down into the frame and into the bottom frame rails. He put the um, car up on a rotisserie to turn it around to put the floor on, which is a carbon fiber honeycomb aluminum floor which was riveted on. Again, all this is um, completely custom and he's done almost almost all of it himself. I've had to help him a little bit with the floor and other little parts here and there. Um, just kind of with the bigger pieces where he can't move them around on his own very easily. Um, yeah, and he's made custom exhaust for it. And I'm going to kind of go into the video now and show you some of the things and let him talk kind of about what he's done to the car so far. The air cleaner comes out of the supercharger and it's going to come over here and then breathe off of a duct over the top of this thing into the fresh air in front of it. So I'm, I'm going to... Do, oh, you're going to get some air intake too? Yeah, it's going to have cold air intake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the air cleaner going to be in here and snorkeled into the, into the throttle body that way. So I got... and they sell all the parts. Yeah, they have everything. For fabricating your own charger tubes and all that stuff. But that's all the panels in there. I got some trick holes in that one panel, huh? <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Lighter. Yeah, they make it actually stronger too because of the reinforced lip on them. Hmm. When you do it. Oh, yeah, because it's beveled like that, yeah. When you turn it like this, it makes it like an Interesting. angle iron. Yeah, so it's lighter and more uh, rigid. Yeah. And the best yeah, of both so worlds. This, this winter will put it in, and like I said, if I get the wire, once I get the sheet metal done, I put the wiring harness in, I put the motor in, then I'm almost to the point where I just got to make up a simple tailpipe, and because uh, the water system's all done on it. Yeah, it's not too far. No, well, there's still a lot. <laughs> there is a lot, but but the reality is, I I could be. There's a lot that's already been done. Yeah, like that harness was 600 bucks. Yeah. All right, and then like I said, I saved I saved a bunch of money doing my own intercooler. And make it, and a lot of the stuff I had to make myself, you know. But this, the uh, dry sump tank. And I like with the roll bar tucked up in there, yeah. so you don't even really notice it when you're next to the car, you know. Right. Don't even realize it has a hoop. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And then. And does it, it goes down behind the firewall then too? It goes down through here. See, it goes all the way down the frame. Ah, uh, yeah. It ties into the chrome chrome molly uh, roll bar. Ties into the chrome molly frame, and it ties in in the bottom of this rail is a two. This is a inch and three quarter chrome molly box tube 
inside of the uh, the man, normal the normal body rail there. Yeah, it's yeah. not the normal body rail. It's welded in right here, and then the um, oh, I see it there, that yeah. tube is what the honeycomb, the carbon fiber honeycomb attaches to on the floor. Yeah, and is riveted to on top and bottom and bonded into it. And then this is this bridge down the center is a uh, tunnel, right? That's chromoly with a structural aluminum uh, riveted to bonded and riveted to it. So, and these are honeycomb panels in here, uh, like a jet fighter has. And so those are those are super strong. There's two sheets of aluminum with a honeycomb pattern inside it that makes it super light and super strong. And those are what's uh, in the firewall here. So. so this here is the street motor tech. This is street the, this will street be, motor. This will be the first motor. <laughs> the first motor, and it'll be supercharged. And um, the second motor will be built to handle uh, big power. So this one's for drag, basically, or well, racing. It can drag or road race it, with a with a turbo. With a turbo, uh, is it going to be turbo or supercharged? It's going to be turbo. The second motor, because that's the supercharger is good to about 300, 320, something like that. But after that, it takes so much boost and makes so much heat. You're more efficient to go to a turbo. So, but to go to bigger boost. You need better internals, and that's mm -hmm. where my cranks yeah. and pistons and stuff are going to come so you in. Don't me, blow them out the back. I'll build side. a whole new block and head, and um, and then take the balance shafts out of it and everything. And then the because right now the balance shafts limit the thing to about 7,500 RPM, but if you take the balance shafts out of it, put the big boost on it, and um, the good headers and pistons and rods and stuff, the the thing can rev to nine grand. Okay, and at <laughs> nine grand with 25 pounds of boost on it. If you switch, power. <laughs> literally, they have they have uh, one of these with a turbo that they tuned. It's never been out. Of, it, it's a uh, not the LSJ, but it's the uh, the LNF, which is the turbo version, the next turbo version that comes from oh, oh. the factory. But it has pretty same much the same one that was in the Cobalt, the much stop updated one. Yeah, it has pretty much the same internals, and they have one of those in a um, Camaro, and they guy made they made on their dyno down there. Uh, with with a turbo setup, stock pistons, rods, uh, and some other stuff, they made 550 horsepower. Stock internals. Yeah, and so you can with the good internals. Really, the limit the limit is your fuel.